everyone, I'm Natalie Dazzo from Wellness and Health Promotion Services. Thanks for joining us at the Fresh You Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you a quick, simple, easy and healthy recipe that you can make with just a few ingredients that you can find here on campus at the UCF Arboretum, the Knights Helping Knights Pantry, or even at your local grocery store. So let's get started. Today we'll be making a one pot beans and greens dish that can be served over rice using onions, tomatoes, chickpeas, kale, and some curry and cumin spice. So first we're gonna start with prepping our food for our meal. So we're starting with a can of chickpeas and we wanna rinse it first. Right, so the reason you want to rinse your chickpeas is because they're in a salt water solution and we don't want that extra sodium. So we're just going to give them a good rinse to get rid of all that extra salt. And they might get kind of bubbly. That's normal. Just rinse them off. All right. And now we have nice clean chickpeas. We'll pour them into our bowl and save them for later. All right, so next we're gonna prepare our kale. So we wanna rinse it really good because there's nothing like getting some salt or some dirt in your teeth when you bite into your meal. So I'm gonna start by just chopping off the ends. I'll move that aside. And we're gonna put them in a nice big bowl, okay? First thing we wanna do is fill the bowl with cold water. So that'll allow any dirt or sand to sink to the bottom of the bowl. And then we can check and see and make sure that there's no dirt left in any of these little crevices. So now we can put that in our colander, take it back to our prep area. And we'll do the same thing with the second batch. So we're back from the kitchen. We've washed our chickpeas and our greens. And right now I'm just gonna make some rice so that we have something to serve this on top of. I just follow the directions, have some water, a little bit of salt in there, but you can put this over any grain that you like. Just follow the instructions, whether you want it to be white rice, brown rice, quinoa, um, barley, whatever you like. So we're gonna get this rice boiling, put a top on it and leave that there. So we'll get started. First thing I'm gonna do is get the greens ready. So you wanna take out this thick piece in the middle. We don't wanna eat that. So we're gonna cut alongside the edge so that we're cutting away all the nice leaves away from that thick center. There we go, starting to see some of those nice greens. And you can pull off any extra greens there. We just don't want to eat that. So we can put this aside here. I have a little bowl on the side. That's my garbage bowl. So anything I want to throw away, I can leave there. It's a nice little helpful trick to have so you're not running back and forth to the trash all the time while you're preparing your foods. So once you've pulled the leaves away from the stems and you're left with just pieces of kale, you wanna cut them into smaller bite-sized pieces so they're easier to eat when you make your dish. So you can just stack them up like this, make sure that you pull your fingers in so you don't cut yourself and just make some nice chops. And then I have these small pieces that I can just toss into my bowl. So that's what I'm gonna keep doing until all the pieces of kale are bite-sized and ready for our cooking. The next thing we're gonna do is chop our onion. So first thing we're gonna do is turn it on its side and just cut off the bottom. Nice sharp knife is good here. It makes sure your knife won't slip. Turn it around, we'll cut off the other side. And then we wanna place it flat. That's where it's safest, where we won't cut ourselves with the knife. So you can cut it in half and then we can peel off the outside edges. Now I don't have a trick here for making your eyes not burn. So if you have any cool tricks or tips here, feel free to put them in the comments. Otherwise, you just have to kind of move fast and get your onion pieces out of the way. So we're just peeling off the outer one or two layers here. I'm gonna put that all in my garbage bowl, get it off of my cutting board so I don't need it. Any little stray pieces, just move them out of the way. And then we're gonna chop our onion. 
So again, you want to be really careful with your fingers. Hold them in, not out. That way you don't cut yourself. And we're going to cut just nice um, thin slices on the edge. I'm going to keep everything nice and intact there because we're going to dice our onion. Okay, and then we can turn it all on its side and just make chops going the other way. Don't cut your fingers. Nice and slow. And then the last piece, you can turn it on its side again. There we go. Chop any little pieces that you missed. And now our onion is ready. We can put that to the side and get cutting on the other half. So now we're going to saute our onions. So I have a nice big pot here that's been warmed up to about medium. And then I'm going to add about two tablespoons of olive oil. Okay, I'm gonna kind of roll it around a little bit, make sure it coats the bottom of the pan. It's nice and warm there. I'm gonna add in my one chopped white onion. You could use a yellow onion, you could even use a red onion, whatever kind of onion you have is fine. All right, give it a little stir. So whenever you add something that's cold to a warm pan, it will bring the temperature of the pan down. So you just have to wait a minute or so. You might want to turn the heat back up to make sure that our onions get to that sauteing temperature again. We also want to season our food in layers. So if we add a little bit of salt and pepper here and there to each layer that we add, that'll make sure, just a pinch or so, that'll make sure that everything has good flavor and nothing's bland. So I'm just starting really simple, a pinch of salt, a pinch of black pepper. Now we've sauteed our onions for about five minutes. They've softened up and they're translucent. So we're ready for our next step, which is that we're gonna add our spices. So today for our dish, we're gonna be adding curry powder and cumin. These are really great strong flavors that um, just add a lot to any dish. So we're gonna start by adding about one and a half teaspoons of curry. So we have our half teaspoon measurement here. I'm gonna add about three of those, get to our one and a half. There we go. It's okay, if it's a little bit more, a little bit less, you can just eyeball it. And now I'm going to add my cumin, just one half teaspoon of that. All right. Now what you want to do is saute your onions or olive oil and your spices together, stirring for about one minute, and that'll help your spices to release their flavor. It'll make an even more flavorful dish than it would be if you just added the spices in at the end. So next we're going to add a can of diced tomatoes in their juices. Give that a quick stir. So now we have our tomatoes, onions, curry, cumin. <laughs> Right, and we're gonna let that come back up to temperature. Every time you add something, temperature goes down. We're gonna let it heat up again, and we're gonna make our broth. So we just need to add a cup of broth here. You can use any canned or boxed veggie broth, chicken broth, whatever you have. What I have here um, is a great little product called Better Than Bouillon. And the reason I like it is because it costs five or six dollars, but this makes a ton of broths. So you don't have to keep buying cans or boxes of broth. You have it on hand and you keep it in your refrigerator. So I'm gonna take a half teaspoon of this. It's like a, a paste. Think of a bouillon cube that you would dissolve in water. It's the same concept. This is some warm water here. I just warmed it up um, in the microwave for two minutes or so. All right. All right, and as you see, I have some nice veggie broth there. We'll go ahead and add that in in just a few minutes once our tomatoes and onions get to simmer together. 
So now we have all of our delicious flavors in this pot here, our onions, tomatoes, our cumin, our curry, all married together and delicious. We're just gonna go ahead and add the rest of our ingredients. So we have our can of washed chickpeas. We have our one cup of broth of your choice. We're gonna add that in, give it a nice stir. Get it back up to a simmer, and then we're gonna go ahead and add in all of our kale. Now that our pot is simmering, I'm ready to add our kale. Now there's too much kale here to add at one time. It probably won't all fit in the pot, so we're gonna add it in batches. So I'm gonna start with a couple big handfuls. See what I can fit. All right. And now I'm just gonna give it a good stir. The kale will start to wilt. It'll start to cook down and it'll shrink in size. So just be patient with it, sitting here stirring. Should we try the kale? Say that again? Should we try the kale? You wanna try it raw? Yes. Sure, come try a little piece. What do you think? good yeah so we added in the rest of the kale gave it a good stir let it simmer for about 10 minutes um, and as you can see now it's got a dark green color it's a little more wilted it's cooked down shrunk in size and now it's ready to eat so we have our rice prepared put a little bit on our plates and I'm gonna serve it up for everybody to try our curried kale and chickpeas our beans and greens recipe so you guys ready want to come try it Come grab a plate. Healthy and delicious. All right. You, you like that kale, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. There you go. Thank you. So what'd you think? Mm. Delicious, right? <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this recipe. And remember, if you have any questions, you can put them below in the comment section and see the video description below for any additional information about our office and our services at Wellness and Health Promotion Services and links to the UCF Arboretum and the Knights Helping Knights Pantry. Thank you.